Hello friends, in this video we are going to have a look at Ka IoT platform. It's an open source IoT platform. What you will see in this video? We will see about what's an IoT platform meant for. Next we will see about IoT open source platform. And next we will see how to install and set up Ka IoT platform using Ka Sandbox. The IoT platform market is growing at a compound annual growth rate of 33% and is expected to reach a 1.6 US billion dollar market in 2021. First, we need to know what's an IoT platform exactly. IoT platforms are the suits of components those help to set up and manage the internet connected devices. A person can remotely collect data, monitor and manage all internet connected devices from a single system. There are a bunch of IoT platforms available online, but building an IoT solution for a company is all dependent on IoT platform host and support quality. Next we will see about what all requires for a complete IoT system. A complete IoT system needs hardware. An IoT system needs hardware such as sensors or devices. These sensors and devices collect data from the environment. For example, humidity sensor that sends moisture data. Next, a complete IoT system needs connectivity. A hardware need to, needs a way to transmit all the data to the cloud. For example, that sending that moisture data to the cloud. A complete IoT system needs software. Software will be hosted in the cloud and is responsible for analyzing the data it's collecting from the sensors. Finally, a complete IoT system needs a user interface. To make all of this useful, that need a way for user to interact with the IoT systems. Example, a web app with a dashboard that shows moisture data. In the figure, the nodes are all connected to IoT platform suit through the route. So the sensor will send the data to the IoT platform suit. The function of the IoT platform suit will be it will collect data from the sensors and analyze the data. Picturically, users can visualize the stored data on dashboards. Some IoT platforms provide visualization and analyzing tool too. Next, we will see about IoT platform advantages. So we can easily connect hardware to the platform using APIs. IoT platforms handle different communication protocols. It provides security and authentication for devices and users. We can easily collect, visualize and analyze data through the help of IoT platform. IoT platforms are integrated with other web services. Next, we will see about popular IoT platforms available in the market. Microsoft Azure IoT Suit from Microsoft, IBM Watson IoT from IBM, AWS IoT from Amazon Service, and Google Cloud IoT Platform, ThingSpeak Platform, Particle, and Salesforce. For commercial purposes, these popular platforms are not free. They will have a pricing as per the user requirement and usage. When we are looking at the open source IoT platforms, popular in the markets are Ka IoT Platform, Device Hive, Thinger, and Thingsbo. Next, we will have a look at Ka Open Source IoT Platform. It's an open source IoT platform. Ka Open Source IoT Platform is 100% open source and efficient Internet of Things cloud platform. Ka is a highly flexible, multi-purpose, open-source middleware platform. Ka enables data management for connected device and backend infrastructure providing the server and endpoint SDK components. Next, we will see about main features of Ka IoT platform. The main features are connectivity, device management, data collection, data processing and analytics. Connectivity is all about messaging between cloud and devices. That is how devices connect to the cloud to perform different operations. Ka provides open IoT protocols for device connection, such as MQTT and Quiap. Device management. 
Ka IoT platform generally provides a register consists of connected devices and other entities managed by the platform. And it also allows to store device attributes, which provides more detailed information about any characters of the device. Example of such attributes could be serial number, MAC address, location, software version, etc. Next, we will see about data collection. CA provides an easy to use protocol for collecting data from the connected devices. This protocol ensures reliable data delivery with response codes, which indicate the result of data processing by the platform. As a result, the device always knows whether the submitted data is safe to delete or should be recent. Next feature is data processing and analytics. CA gives a lot of freedom in processing collecting data. The platform features data collection adapters that allow sending data to various databases or data analytic systems such as MongoDB. Next, we will see about fundamental concepts behind the CA IoT platform. CA IoT platform consists of CA server, CA extensions and endpoint SDKs. CA server is the backend part of the platform. It is used to manage tenants, application, users and devices. CA server exposes integration interface and offers administrative capabilities. CA extension are independent software modules that improve platform functionality. Endpoint SDK is a library that provides client-side APIs for various CA platform features and handle communication, data marshalling, persistence, etc. CA SDKs are designed to facilitate the creation of client application to be run on various connected devices. There are several endpoint SDK types are available in different programming languages. In the figure, nodes are all loaded with CA SDK. It sends the data to the CA server. From the CA server, user can visualize or analyze the data of the endpoints. Next, we will see about advantage of CA IoT platform. Freedom. Yes, of course, CA is an open source platform, so we are free to deploy CA service anywhere we prefer. Security. By default, CA communication with the device is secured with TLS or DTLS encryption. Open IoT protocols. The CA platform support messaging with the device via MQTT and Quaya. These are two are widely used IoT protocols. So next we will see CA supported platforms. So the endpoint SDK can be built either using Java, C, C++ or Objective-C. So when we are hearing about the operating systems, for these are the operating systems supported by the car and about the hardware platforms. These are all the hardware platforms supported by car. Uh, Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone is there. Yes, Texas uh, MCU is there and our tiny ESP8266 Wi-Fi modules. It's also supported by CA. Next, we will see CA hardware requirements. In general, the minimum hardware requirements for the C SDK are about 10 kilobyte of RAM and 40 kilobyte of ROM. The Java SDK requires close to 70 MB per JVM instance. The minimum requirements for the C++ SDK are somewhere between the Java and the C SDK's requirements. CA is on the progress to run its SDK on 8 or 16 bit MCUs and on Arduinos as well as. CA comes with two ways of installation method. You can either install it as a single Linux node or you can set up a CA cluster node. As to install single Linux node, we are using CA sandbox. CA sandbox emulates a single node CA installation which comes already pre configured CA cluster node, a CA cluster represents a number of interconnected CA server nodes. To set up a CA cluster, you need to have at least three Linux server nodes, which CA node service installed on each one. For getting CA sandbox, we have to go to this link, caproject.org and for accessing the documentation, go to this links docs. For getting the CA sandbox, just click the link get car and the available version is car point zero point one zero and for access for downloading the sandbox we just need to sign up an account so just click login with your car id to download and 
I already had an account. So for first for first time, just click on the sign up and add, add a new account. So I'm now I'm just clicking login. Then then I'm just accepting that agreement and to use sandbox the minimum requirement system must have the minimum requirement of 60 bit 64 bit OS and it supports Debian family and Ubuntu families and Red Hat families and 4 GB of RAM is required or otherwise you we can uh, you can install through AWS cloud but uh, we have you have to pay charge for running uh, car sandbox on AWS so now in this case I'm downloading the sandbox image so wait till uh, download will finish so I have downloaded the file so switching to my virtual box click on file import planes and selecting the file And I'm going with the default values. Press on click on import and wait for a few minutes to set up. After importing the car sandbox, just start the car sandbox. And one thing you have to make sure that go to settings and make the network adapter as bridge. And I'm starting that my car sandbox. It gets started in this process. So you can see that my sandbox, my server is running on 192.168.1.5. So I'm switching to my browser. So this is my sandbox. So you can see that there are several demos by default. And we go to complexity basics. So these are the basics demos. So thanks for watching this video and in the next video I will post a demo on data collection and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet subscribed and thank you for watching this. See you on next video.